and welcome to another week of exciting episodes of the Literary Lutheran Reads the Book of Concord. Today we are continuing to go through Article 8, The Person of Christ, from the Solid Declaration of the Formula of Concord. This personal union does not exist, nor can be thought of without such a true communion of the natures. Not just a mere human nature, whose property it is to suffer and die, has suffered for the sins of the world, but the Son of God himself truly suffered. However, he suffered according to the received human nature. In accordance with our simple Christian faith, he truly died, although the divine nature can neither suffer nor die. Dr. Luther has fully explained this in his confession concerning Christ's supper in opposition to the blasphemous Eliosis or interchange of Zwingli, who taught, that one nature should be taken and understood for the other. Dr. Luther has committed that teaching as a devil's mask to the abyss of hell. For this reason, the ancient teachers of the Church combined both words, communion and union, in the explanation of this mystery, and have explained the one word by the other. See Irenaeus, Book 4, Chapter 37, Athanasius, in the letter to Epictetus, Hilary concerning the Trinity, Book 9, Basil and Gregory of Nyssa in uh, Theodoret, Damascus, Book 3, Chapter 19. On account of this personal union and communion of the divine and the human nature in Christ, we believe, teach, and confess what is said about the majesty of Christ according to his humanity, according to our simple Christian faith. He sits at the right hand of the almighty power of God. We also confess what follows from that. All of this would mean nothing and could not stand if this personal union and communion of the natures in the person of Christ did not exist in deed and truth. On account of this personal union and communion of the natures, Mary, the most blessed virgin, did not bear a mere man. But, as the angel Gabriel testifies, she bore a man who was truly the son of the Most High God. Luke chapter 1 verse 35. He showed his divine majesty even in his mother's womb because he was born of a virgin without violating her virginity. Therefore, she is truly the mother of God and yet has remained a virgin. He did all, he did all his miracles by the power of this personal union. He showed his divine majesty according to his pleasure when and as he willed. He did this not just after his resurrection and ascension but also in a state of humiliation. For example, a. At the wedding of Cana of Galilee, John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. b. When he was 12 years old among the learned, Luke chapter 2, verses 42 through 50. c. In the garden, when with a word he cast his enemies to the ground, John chapter 18, verse 6. d. In death, when he died, not simply as any other man, but in and with his death, conquered sin, death, devil, hell, and eternal damnation. Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 through 15. The human nature alone would not have been able to do these miracles if it had not been personally united and had communion with the divine nature. The human nature, after the resurrection from the dead, is exalted above all creatures in heaven and on earth. This is nothing other than that he entirely laid aside the form of a servant. Philippians chapter 2, verses 7 through 11. He did not lay aside his human nature, but retains it to eternity. He has a full possession and use of the divine majesty according to his received human nature. However, he had this majesty immediately at his conception, even in his mother's womb. As the Apostle te testifies in Philippians chapter 2, verse 7, he laid it aside. As Dr. Luther explains, he kept it concealed in the state of his humiliation and did not always use it, but only when he wanted to use it. Now he has ascended to heaven, not merely as any other saint, but as the Apostle testifies in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 10. Above all heavens, he also truly fills all things, being present everywhere, not only as God, but also as man. He rules from sea to sea and to the ends of the earth, as the prophets predict in Psalm 8, verse 1, Psalm 6, and Psalm 93, verses 1 through 4, and Zechariah chapter 9, verse 10. And the apostles testify in Mark chapter 16, 20. He did this everywhere with them and confirmed their word with signs. This did not happen in an earthly way. 
As Dr. Luther explains, this happened according to the way things are done at God's right hand. God's right hand is, is no set place in heaven as the sacramentarians assert without any ground in the Holy Scriptures. It is nothing other than God's almighty power which fills heaven and earth. Christ is installed according to his humanity in deed and truth without confusing or equalizing the two natures in their essence and essential properties. By this communicated divine power, according to the words of his testament, he can be and is truly present with his body and blood in the Holy Supper. He has pointed this out for us by his word. This is possible for no other man, because no man is united with the divine nature the way Jesus, the Son of Mary, is. No man is installed in such a divine, almighty majesty and power through and in the personal union of the two natures in Christ. For in him the divine and the human nature are personally united with each other. So in Christ the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. Colossians 2 verse 9. In this personal union the two natures have such a grand, intimate, indescribable communion that even the angels are astonished by it. As St. Peter testifies, they have their delight and joy in looking into it. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 12. All of this will soon be explained in order and somewhat more fully. This has been the Literary Lutheran Reads Book of Concord, and I wish you a blessed day.